don't know, as humans, we always want the kind of immediate mirror in, from in, like in the past of whatever's happening today. Yeah. And sometimes on a smaller level, um, there is like a direct parallel, but there's just so every, I mean, I hate the phrase now because I've heard it so many times, but the uh, history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes, but like, there's nothing that's ever exactly the same. Um, and so I can't think of a period that's exactly like today, just because there's so much going on and there's so many different variables. So so we, we really wanted to catch up with you right now because so many people are trying to look to the past as they figure out what's happening with the economy right now. So just curious, you know, is there a period in history that mirrors what's happening right now as, as you look across, um, you know, all, all of the things that you study? Um, I think generally it's a question I get a lot and I always disappoint with the answer because I feel like, I don't know, as humans, we always want the kind of immediate mirror in, from in, like in the past of whatever's happening today. And sometimes on a smaller level, um, there is like a direct parallel, but there's just so every, I mean, I hate the phrase now because I've heard it so many times, but the uh, history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes, but there's nothing that's ever exactly the same. Um, and so I can't think of a period that's exactly like today just because there's so much going on and there's so many different variables. Um, yeah, but you hit on a great point. We, we want the answer, right? We want to know the outcome. <laughs> we want we want to yeah. say, oh, yeah, this happened before. And this is what this is what the result is, which, yeah. you know, as you say, is probably unrealistic. But what are you know, what are some of the you, uh, what are some of the sort of, you know, periods that while not exactly the same, like what would you look at, especially coming out of this pandemic? I feel like people are trying to figure out, are things completely different and, and, and it's a complete break with the past or are there similarities? Um, so a few things that I would say is first, there is a period um, that I've been reading about recently um, and a frequent Real Vision guest and sometimes host, uh, Jim Grant has written a great book on it um, that I need to now order. But uh, I've been reading about the 1920, 1921 recession, which is interesting because there are a lot of differences um, between that period and today, but there are also some interesting similarities just generally with that kind of post-World War I, or actually even during World War I and following a couple of years and maybe, hopefully, a decade, because then we would have a similar Roaring Twenties. Um, but in that period, obviously, World War I, 1914 to 1918, and then in 1918, you have the Spanish flu, which again is very different than COVID, um, but and isn't really even the Spanish flu as I think most people now know. Um, but it was a pandemic nonetheless, and it wrapped up in 1918. And then following that, in 1919, you had what was known as the Red Scare, which was this summer of uh, racially kind of motivated uh, riots across America around like race relations and some high profile cases of uh, police brutality against um, African Americans. And so, again, something we saw coming out of pandemic. So that cycle was going. And then now, after the pandemic is nearing the end, hopefully, we also are experiencing um, a recession, which is, again, something that happened in 1920, 1921, and we're currently in 2022 and technically in a recession. And so what's interesting about that 1920 recession, though, is that nobody really talks about it because it was obviously overshadowed by a much larger depression nine years later. Mm. Um, and so everybody kind of forgets about it. But it's an interesting um, example, especially today, just because of the parallels that I mentioned, but also uh, if we keep following this kind of trend, it'd be interesting to see whether this short recession now, if it is going to be short, then leads to a similar decade of prosperity, um, like the Roaring Twenties and that period. But um, we'll see what happens. But it, it's an interesting example because it's very different to what uh, kind of monetary policy and Fed policy is today because it lasted 18 months um, and the economy was very different. Um, and a lot of the reasons for the initial fall were related to the collapsing uh, price of cotton and other agricultural exports and uh, commodities post-World War I because the demand wasn't there anymore. But the Fed during that period... You have to remember the Fed was only founded in 1913. And so at that point, um, the Federal Reserve Act actually didn't give the Fed any powers for acting as a lender of last resort. 
And so when they were faced with this severe downturn in 1920, it was kind of like the first true test uh, for the Fed in a real panic and real recession. Um, and instead of doing what we would now expect the Fed to do and lower rates and provide you know more stimulus and cash and uh, very kind of uh, dovish policy, the, the Fed actually hiked rates um, in November 19. 1919, it, their discount rate was something like 4%. And then by January 2020, they had hiked it to like 7%, even as the economy was like tanking. Recession overall, uh, unemployment reached 12%, and inflation averaged in 1918. I think inflation was at 18%. And in 1919, it was 14%. 1920 is 15 and a half percent. But then in 1921, prices fell 10%. And between 1920 and 1922, there was deflation of like 23%. And so it was, instead of stepping in though, the government and the Fed kept rates high because at that time the view was we have to purge the rottenness, I think was the, <laughs> the expression that the Fed used. And so instead of today where it'd be like we saw during the pandemic where rates yeah. are slashed and there's a bunch of... Uh, kind of easing and stimulus provided, it was let them fail kind of mentality. And it's, the government actually cut spending 75% over the two years of this recession, instead of, again, coming in and supporting the economy more. And it's been used as a kind of example for, especially the libertarian crowd um, of how that type of approach can work because the market corrects itself. Because again, within 18 months, the economy rebounded, and then we had the roaring 20s. Um, I feel like it's probably more of a one-off than a, yeah. an but example of what there's never any discussion of the collateral damage that comes with yeah, the, exactly. the wreckage of, of what, it, what, you know, the cost of that um, yeah. is kind of always conveniently forgotten. Um, but exactly. it's a really interesting, it is a really interesting time to think about because although, as you said, there are many things that will be different I mean, three thing, a couple of things you said to me really jumped out, which is that the Fed was raising rates into that downturn, completely different reasons. But we do, even with all they know, and you know, let's remember Ben Bernanke, who a lot of you, know, you can, however you feel about him, he was a student of what they did wrong in the depression, right? And that that informed a lot of what he did in the great financial crisis. Some people would say, you know, sowed the seeds of, of the sort of a bubble of cheap money that we have. But again, like the the cost risk analysis at the time, um, ba he based a lot of his um, his decisions and collectively the Fed did on their own history. Um, but they are raising they are raising rates into it, which they're doing now. Uh, they you had inflation which was so high, turn tail quickly, which is a big issue, a big debate right now, whether that's even physically possible. And you have the, the resulting roaring 20s, which I don't think anybody has on their radar right now. I mean, you hear everyone talking about a recession, how deep will it be, how painful, and a lot of people wondering, is it going to be protracted, prolonged? Is it this sort of like we move sideways? And there's a lot of bearishness out there. You don't hear anyone saying once this is over, it's going to be this fantastic time of great prosperity. I don't hear anyone talking about that. Do you? No, but it, uh, it is funny with kind of human nature and just like our uh, our approach to things. Because last year, I feel like everybody was talking about uh, a roaring 20s coming. And then this summer, it's now everyone's bearish and like, how bad is it going to get? And it's right. just we funny recency how bias, things right? can right. like that. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed the video. At Real Vision, we help you understand the complex world of finance, business, and the global economy with in-depth analysis from real experts. Join the revolution at realvision.com.